Hi, I'm Chris. This is our channel, Two Wheels Big Life. And today I want to talk about the five costs you should consider before buying a motorcycle. Motorcycle riding as a hobby can be deceptively expensive. And I don't think that many people are aware that there are a lot of hidden costs associated with buying a motorcycle. So let's get into it. Cost number one. I know this is a no brainer, but it is the cost of the motorcycle. For this illustration, I'm gonna just talk to mainly the people who are gonna finance a motorcycle rather than just go in and pay cash for it. Lucky you. So most people have some discretionary funds at the end of the month when everything is all done and paid for that they look at and they think, hmm, I think I could afford a motorcycle payment out of that when you, you know, you're probably right. In fact, you might even have a particular motorcycle in mind that you want to purchase. So when you get to the dealership, just know, and if that's the way you're going to go is at a dealership, just know you might be wandering around and there might be another bike that kind of tickles your fancy a little bit, might cost a little bit more. So knowing what your bottom line is, what you can afford is very, very important. I'm going to caution you to be careful to not break the bank account. Uh, don't make the mistake of denying yourself three square meals a day just to make that bike payment. Don't fall into the trap of doing some impulse motorcycle buying. A lot of people do. Do the research not based on what you believe you can pay. Do the research based on some quick calculations that you can do um, to, to take a look at what your percentage of your take home is. That's very easy to do. You know what your take home pay is. Add up all of those fixed expenses. I'm talking about rent or mortgage, utilities, insurance, phone payment, all that stuff that you pay each month, the rest that is left, that's called your discretionary income. And that's what is your play money. That's what you could go out and maybe purchase a motorcycle with. What you have left, does it have enough to support a bike payment? Well, it's up for you to decide. All right, let's move on to the next cost after you've nailed down just how much you can afford or you think you can afford a bike payment. Because believe it or not, if you're going to, especially if you're going to a dealership, that are, uh, there are other costs to consider, especially if you're buying a new motorcycle. So that leads us to cost number two. Tax, title, license, setup fee, build out fee, dock fee, freight, I mean, you name it, and they're going to put it on there. <laughs> wow, that's a lot, and it does add up to a lot. Let me give you an example. My daughter recently purchased a Yamaha MT-03 Hyper Naked Motorcycle. I like that word, Hyper Naked. I don't know why. Everything's going to be hyper for now. She's not just pregnant, she's hyper pregnant. <laughs> that truck isn't big, it's just hyper big. I don't know. Okay, I digress. Let's go back. It is considered a great beginner motorcycle. In fact, she went straight from her training class right over to the dealership and bought it. Why? Because they advertised online for that particular brand new motorcycle, $47.99. She did the calculations. She knew her take home. She knew her fixed expenses. She knew what her discretionary, her play money was. And she thought, hmm, $47.99. Yeah, buddy, I think I can handle that. So why or how did she walk out paying not $47.99, she paid $8,400. What, what happened? All right, let's break it down. But besides the price of the bike, there was a freight and setup fee of $2,000. There was sales tax, over $400. Service contract, $900. You know, we all have our personal opinions about those extended warranties, so I'll just leave it at that. Uh, tax and title was over a hundred and there was a dock fee. Uh, not for sure what that is, but it was $150. So all said and done, she paid over $3,600 more than what she kind of thought she was going to pay when she walked in the door. I'm not saying anything negative about the dealership. I'm just saying that you need to be hyper aware that there's going to be some additional costs associated with a, mo new, with a new motorcycle, especially at a dealership. It's not just the listed advertised price that kind of sucks you in. All right, let's talk about insurance because that is our third cost. Um, before you sign on the dotted line, you probably would, it's best to, even before you go to the dealership or before you even buy the motorcycle, is call your insurance company and get a quote for that particular type of motorcycle so that all of a sudden you don't bring this bike home and then you're calling your insurance company and you're getting sticker shock of, you know, your insurance is, I don't know, $50, $100 a month and you didn't take that into consideration. 
Um, insurance prices are also going to vary on what type of motorcycle you buy. You know, a Grom, a Ninja, a Harley, whatever. It's, it's probably going to vary in whatever state you're in, that's all gonna vary too. It's just best call your insurance company before you purchase a bike, know how much you're gonna pay for insurance. Because if you think you can get away with not paying insurance, if you're financing the motorcycle, that's not going to go because the finance company is going to catch up to you and if you're not paying insurance, they'll tack it on and their insurance is a whole lot more than what you would get through your insurance company. So, plan on paying insurance. All right, cost number four is gear. A lot of people, when buying their first motorcycle, they spend every cent on the bike and they barely have any money left over for gear. Try this uh, for an example. I want you to get up from wherever you are. I want you to walk out that door whatever you're in flip-flop shorts uh, sandals tank top that's even better I want you to walk out to the road I want you to take a good long running start and do one of those Hollywood stunt movie slide along your butt or do the face dive whatever okay you're not gonna do that because like, ow that's going to hurt now consider if you do that off of motorcycle going really fast so at a bare minimum this is my own personal opinion I'm not going to beat at gat over over your head that's you know all up to you my own personal opinion is number one a full face helmet a reinforced motorcycle jacket reinforced motorcycle pants protective gloves and at ankle protective boots that's my own personal opinion that also comes with a price tag there are cheap cheap brands there are expensive expensive brands you can get middle of the road I don't know it just depends on what your taste is and you know how fat or skinny your wallet is by this point because <laughs> the stuff is starting to add up so on average, I'm guessing 500, 1,000, you know, maybe even go shopping for motorcycle gear before you go get the bike and think, wow, that's just really expensive. Or I don't know, I, I look really cool in that $1,000 jacket. All right, you're thinking, are we done yet? Almost, it's like one of those commercials, but wait, there's more. We're on to cost number five and it's for new motorcycles. It's the 600 mile break-in oil change. It was kind of a shocker when I first came across it you know you learn something new every day with this new motorcycle comes a 600 mile break-in period yep when it's all said and done and your wallet is getting thinner and thinner and you are having a blast on that motorcycle and it reaches that 600 mile mark and there's a warning that'll come up and say take it to the nearest dealer you need to take it and have the break-in oil replaced and then a mechanic is going to go and touch and feel everything on your motorcycle and make sure everything's snug and tight and, and wearing the way it should wear that comes with a price tag and i'm going to give the example of what my daughter just experienced in and when she took her super hyper naked motorcycle in, okay, it was a Yamaha MT-03, <laughs> but when she took it in, um, she did not ask how much it was gonna cost. So when she went to pick the bike up, it came up to $469. $33 was for oil, $400 was for labor, and $35 was tax. Yes, uh, another cost you need to consider, especially if it's a new motorcycle. And I just wanted to say, if it's a new motorcycle and you want to keep that warranty, don't even think about changing this the doing that 600 mile break in oil yourself uh, it's not a good thing they record it they keep track of it just go in have it done put it in your budget I also thought I would toss in a bonus expense to consider I'm not for sure if the word bonus is really a good word to use or appropriate here but you do need to know motorcycle tires are not like car tires you're not going to get 60,000 miles on them you're gonna get depending on the tire depending on uh, you know how many burnouts you do you're gonna get maybe between five Five and 12,000 maybe sometimes you can I've got one that I got 18,000 on I got another set that I got 6,000 miles on so uh, that is another expense on a regular basis if you're an avid rider that you need also need to consider and make sure that uh, yeah how's your wallet feeling now it's your butt kind of light it's not <laughs> Okay, sorry. So I just wanted you to know those are my brief um, costs for you to consider before you go out and get into the absolutely amazing, wonderful, wouldn't want to miss it for anything hobby of motorcycle riding. It can be expensive, but it's also very exhilarating. All right, that's it for now. We'll see you out on the road.